Hello, I'm Jeremy, and welcome back to Jeremy Use Music Reviews. I listen to music, and you hear my thoughts. I freaking love Tally Hall. Their music is exactly my cup of tea. Catchy, surreal, theatrical, and fun as hell. I found out about Tally Hall from their song Ruler of Everything and have been a fan ever since. And to bounce back from the awfulness of Stacy's mom, I'm going to review their fantastic debut studio album, Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum. This thing is an incredible cavalcade of weirdness that I can't wait to share with all of you. So let's not waste any time and dive right in. This is Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum. This cover is amazing. It basically shows all five members of Tally Hall in the titular Mechanical Museum. And not only is it visually distinct and captures the tone of the album very well, but there's so much creative and awesome stuff here, from a buffalo to Humpty Dumpty to a two-headed man to a TV with a question mark on it to so much more. An incredible cover in every sense of the word. I like to say hello and welcome you. Good day, that is my name. Come here and sit down. I'm so glad you even really truly came. The album starts out amazingly with its phenomenal opening track, Good Day. The production is absolutely fantastic, with great pianos, infectious drums, fun tambourines, cool electronic elements, nice acoustic guitars, and this awesomeness. Absolutely fantastic production that sounds amazing and does a good job establishing the musical tone of the album. The vocals are also fantastic. Joe Hawley, Rob Cantor, and Zubin Sedgji have enjoyably theatrical and enthusiastic vocals that combine with the production to make an incredibly fun and enjoyably chaotic sound. Truly great vocal performances. And the lyrics are great. Good Day is essentially about how the album might take a few listens in order to truly appreciate it, as some people might not enjoy its bizarre theatrical style as much as I do. It's a very clever lyrical sen sentiment and fits with how this is the opening track of their first album. I also like how there are a ton of blink and you'll miss it callbacks to later songs on the album. Really neat stuff. Good Day is a fantastic opening track. The production slaps, the vocals rule, and the lyrics are very clever. An absolutely fantastic song that's one of my favorite tracks from Tally Hall and a great start to this album. Here's that part again where everything's more than it should be and greener seems to fall beneath your feet. Greener is really good. The production is really toe-tapping with an incredibly infectious melody an energetic guitar, and an enjoyable momentum. It's really fun production that reminds me of the Steam game Teenage Blob, having the same kind of energy as the music featured in that game. Solid production all around. The vocals are also really good. Rob Cantor and Zubin Sedgi give their performances a lot of theatricality and flair, gelling with the production to make a very fun sound. They do a really good job of demonstrating the vocal capabilities of this band and why they're so awesome. And the lyrics are good too. They're very interesting, fun, quirky, and good. Not the best lyrics of the album, but very solid nonetheless. Greener is just a very fun and simple song. The production is fun, the vocals rule, and the lyrics are good. It's a decent cool down from Good Day and gives the album a nice momentum. Not the most complex song of the album, but still a fun, simple experience. Not bad. The mini mall is calling us all in. So kids, pack up your mom's car, back up the wind star, kick it in drive, and arrive at the Mega Mart. Like Good Day, Welcome to Tally Hall is a very fun song that does a good job introducing the audience to Tally Hall's goofy theatrical style. The production is very fun and simplistic, with video game sounding techno beats, a fun, groovy rhythm, and an enjoyably laid-back vibe. It's very enjoyable production that works well with the song. And like Greener and Good Day, the vocals are great. Every member of Tally Hall does a great job demonstrating their vocal talents, 
and they have an enjoyable and infectious enthusiasm that combines with the production to make Welcome to Tally Hall a fun toe-tapper. The lyrics are also great. Similar to how the lyrics of lyrics to Good Day introduced the album to the listening public, the lyrics to Welcome to Tally Hall introduces each of the band members to the listening public. And they do a great job. They're very playful, informative, goofy, and set the tone well. Great lyrics all around. Welcome to Tally Hall is a very good song. The production is fun, the vocals are on point, and the lyrics are really effective. A great Tally Hall introduction to go with a great album. Next, the Strand is set in up the white brick house with flowers and some questions for Miss Dolmarie. Taken for a Ride is awesome. So freaking awesome. The production is incredibly fun, jaunty, and calming. It feels like the opening credits to a fun and wacky 90s comedy, and I love the little flourishes that are added into the production. It's very unique and enjoyable production that really makes Taken for a Ride fun and distinct from the other songs in the album. The vocals are also awesome. I love the robotic edge they have. It's incredibly uncanny and strange, yet fun and whimsical at the same time, fitting with the vibe of MMMM beautifully. And the bits of non-robotic vocals really add to the song's theatricality and break the song up in a satisfying way. It's a very enjoyable and entertaining vocal performance. And the lyrics are so cool. They're very unique, detailed, interesting, and creative. They paint a very cool picture and make the song even more cool and unique. Taken for a Ride is a fantastic song. The production is really enjoyable, the vocals are cool, and the lyrics are interesting. A creative and cool song that's yet another great showing of Tally Hall's talents. I've been sleeping in a cardboard box, spending every dollar at the liquor shop, and even though I know I haven't got a lot. The bidding is okay. The production has a decent rhythm and satisfying groove with a wonky bass and some solid instrumentation. The only real annoying thing about the production is the humming. It just really gets on my nerves and brings the song down a bit, but not too much. The vocals are all right. Joe Hawley, Rob Cantor, and Zubin Sedji all do effective jobs, adding to the bizarreness of the song and gelling with the production to make the song feel satisfying. As for the lyrics, they're pretty good. They're about how the dating scene is incredibly frustrating, and while I can't relate as I've never dated, the lyrics are still effective, both at conveying the feeling of the song and fitting with the vibe of the album. The bidding, while not awful, is definitely one of the album's weaker tracks. The production is fine, but not great. The vocals are effective, but not amazing. And the lyrics are decently written, but not really all that connectable, at least to me. And also the humming really gets on my nerves. It's not really a bad song, but the bidding isn't really going to be a track I return to all that much. It's just fine. I suppose you're quite content in your swimming pool. All you pink skinned babes are the same. Be Born is generally considered to be the worst song on this album. Do I think so? Well, it's definitely not the best song on Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum, but it's fine. The production is a lot more acoustic than songs like Good Day, Welcome to Tally Hall, and Taken for a Ride, which does a good job making Be Born stand out from the other songs and sound really good to boot. Very unique and fun production. The vocals are also really good. Joe Hawley's voice is very soft and soothing, blending beautifully with the production to make a really nice sound, an effective and enjoyable vocal performance. And the lyrics are very solid. The way this song des describes birth is very interesting and feels very Tally Hall-esque. They're not amazing, but they are very interesting and add a lot to the song. While I can understand why some people consider Be Born to be a bad song, as it does feel out of place in an album like this, and it's not an amazing song, I think it's alright. The production is nice, Joe sounds pretty good, and the lyrics are interesting. Not great, but certainly not terrible either. A perfectly fine song. Do you want a banana? Peel it down and go mm -mm -mm -mm. Do you want a banana? This banana for you. Banana Man has gotten some hate for being racist. And while I can definitely see someone finding Banana Man racist, I honestly love this track. 
The production is enjoyably fun and tropical, fitting beautifully with the vibe the song is going for. It's very simple, but fun and enjoyably effective. But what really makes this track awesome are the vocals and the lyrics. Remember that snippet I played earlier? Joe sounds like that throughout the entire song. He does briefly sing in his normal voice, but for 90% of the song, he speaks in this weird accent. And while I could understand someone finding it annoying or racist, I really love it. It's so goofy, weird, and uniquely charming. It's a really fun and goofy performance that really makes the song enjoyable and fun, and a blast to dance to. As for the lyrics, they're the best kind of meaningless. There's a ton of interpretations of what these lyrics mean, from capitalism to relaxing and enjoying life to drug addiction. And while those are perfectly valid interpretations, I'm of the camp that th thinks this song is 100% pure meaningless nothing. But that's a good thing, as it adds to the fun of the song. Banana Man is one of the most enjoyably goofy things I've ever heard. The production is nice and tropical, the vocals are ridiculous as hell, and the lyrics are the best kind of meaningless. If you hate this song, either because you think it's annoying or you think it's racist, I completely get it. But I love this complete pile of insanity so much, and it's definitely one of my favorite tracks from this amazing album. All hail the Banana Man. Cause it's one thing or another I don't even know why I bother One thing just tears her down Just Apathy is really good. The production is very pretty, with lovely pianos, lush guitars, an enjoyable rock momentum, and some fantastic theatrical energy. It's a fantastic showing of Tally Hall's enjoyably theatrical style, and is incredibly memorable and toe-tapping. Absolutely great production. The vocals also rule. Joe Hawley's voice is the perfect combination of soft and passionate, blending with the production to make a soothing and soft sound, yet still having enough enjoyable energy to carry the song's material. A very solid performance that does a great job demonstrating Joe's talents. The lyrics are also interesting. They're very complex and descriptive, detailing how the singer keeps tearing apart the people that he dates and wondering why he even dates them. Not the strongest lyrics in the album, but very interesting nonetheless. Just Apathy is a really cool, good song. The production is fantastic, Joe sounds great, and the lyrics are cool. A definite album highlight that does a good job demonstrating Tally Hall's theatrical flair. Check it out. I wish you could have heard the music when the clouds crawl overhead. I finally felt enthusiastic. Spring in a Storm is very lovely. The production has a very relaxing, calming vibe, which fits with the song's material, makes it stand out, and feels very lovely. The guitars are lovely. The rain sounds gives the music some lovely ambiance, and the percussion is really cool. And I also like the interlude where the children ask Mr. Moon about the sky. It's a really cool and interesting addition that gives the song some personality. Easily some of the album's best production. Joe Hawley also sounds freaking fantastic. His voice is incredibly soft and delicate, but still has a theatrical flair combining with the production to make an idyllic and sweet sound. A fantastic performance to go with fantastic production. And just like the vocals and production, the lyrics are also great. They're about how, even though you might feel insignificant in the grand scheme of things, you're just a part of nature as everything else. This is a very nice message that fits well with the themes of the album and is executed very well. Great lyrics for a solid song. Spring in a Storm is a great song. The production is fantastic, Joe Hawley gives a great performance, and the lyrics have a nice message that perfectly fits with the vibe of Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum. Definitely an album highlight that's well worth a listen. I have this little thing It's probably just a fling Two girls I like a lot I think they're really hot Two Love is easily the worst song on this album. The production has some energy and momentum with some solid guitars, energetic production, and a toe-tapping groove, but it feels a lot more generic when compared to some of the album's more creative production choices. 
In a different album, this would probably fit right at home, but in an album like Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum, this production feels out of place, completely different from the album's overall sound, but not in a way that adapts to the album's style, like Be Born Dead. Not bad production, but not that good either. Joe's voice also sounds really generic and bland. Holly usually is good at giving songs a theatrical and enjoyable flair, but his voice in this song is so generic and nothing. And these lyrics are bleh. They're basically about the singer stalking Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen. And while it's treated as satirical, it doesn't really work or excuse the creepiness of the lyrics. Too Love is really not good. The production is fine, but clashes with the album in a really bad way. The title is stupid. The vocals are bland and the lyrics are ew. Tally Hall, I love you, but this song just ain't it. I have been trying to write a haiku for you. Some things I just can't do. Haiku is decent. The production is very solid with some lovely instrumentals, a toe-tapping groove, and a summery vibe that fits more with the album than the production of the last song. And the crowd noises help give, help give the song some uh, ambience. It's nothing amazing, but it's very solid and effective production that fits the vibe of the album. Joe's voice is also much better. It's much more theatrical and fun, and gels with the production to make a relaxing and fun sound. A very enjoyable vocal performance. And the lyrics are great as well. They're about the process of writing a poem for someone, and all the struggles that come with writing, writing poems, showing how all but two of the titular haikus failed. They're effective lyrics that show that even though you might fail, you shouldn't give up, because it might not be perfect, but you'll still succeed. Haiku, while not amazing, is still an effective song, with lovely production, really great vocals, and interesting lyrics with a great message that fits the vibe of the album. It's not amazing, but compared to Two Love, it's a massive improvement. Great job, you guys. There's kings in distant cities who rule the persons and make them happy, and we won't forget about a deservatory congratulatory. The Whole World in You is a pretty good song. The production is very fun with an old-timey doo-wop vibe that perfectly fits Tally Hall's aesthetic. There are some really fun trumpets and tubas, infectious and enjoyable percussion, and an overall energetic and jaunty tune. Really great production that beautifully fits with the Tally Hall vibe. Joe Hawley also sounds great. Like the production, Joe's voice feels very old-timey and doo-wop-like blending with the production to create an enjoyable sound that speaks directly to my doo-wop-loving soul. A great performance all around, and the lyrics are also really good. They're about the singer praising someone, and while that is a simple concept, the way the song executes it is very Tally Hall-esque and open to interpretation. They're very creative lyrics that are the perfect balance between descriptive and interpretable. The Whole World in You is a really enjoyable song. The production is fun and enjoyably old-timey, Joe sounds fantastic, and the lyrics are really interesting. A, f a very simple album highlight, but an album highlight nonetheless. It's a 13-second prelude to Ruler of Everything. There's literally nothing to say about it. You like how I dance? I got draconian pants. You like how I walk? Do you like how I talk? Do you like how my face disintegrates? And now, here we are. Tally Hall's most famous song, and the one that introduced me to them, Ruler of Everything. And like most of the other songs on this album, Ruler of Everything is fantastic. The production is incredibly versatile ranging from relaxing and calming to fun and playful to energetic and rockin'. There are so many creative and interesting production choices that really make Ruler of Everything stand out in a fun way. The vocals are also fantastic. Joe and Zubin both do fantastic jobs, as their vocals have a surreal theatrical flair 
that really makes the song stand out in an enjoyable, in a very enjoyable way. These vocals definitely aren't everyone's cup of tea, but they really make the song enjoyably weird. Great vocal performances all around. But what really makes Ruler of Everything an awesome song are the lyrics. These lyrics are so complex and interesting. This song became a meme last year, and I can definitely see why, as, like good memes, these lyrics are both enjoyably absurd yet full of meaning, detailing how, in the end, time controls everything. They're incredibly interesting and creative lyrics that make the song enjoyably unique. Ruler of Everything is an absolutely fantastic song. The production is amazing, the vocals are great, and the lyrics are just incredible. This was an absolutely great introduction to Tally Hall that's well-deserving of being one of their most well-known songs. Just an absolute masterpiece of music. When you had to bid a two, said you'd never love a new. I wondered if I could hold it and fall in love with it too. And so we end Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum with the 15th and final track, not counting the two bonus tracks, which I'm not reviewing in this video, Hidden in the Sand. And it's a really good note to end on. The production is pretty much the exact opposite of the production for Ruler of Everything, where in that song, the production was incredibly versatile and complex. Here, the production is a lot more simple with just a ukulele and some ambient ocean waves. And like with Be Born, it's different, but in a way that still fits the album. It's very relaxing, lovely, and beautiful production that gives this closing track a sense of finality. The vocals are also good. Like The Whole World and You, the vocals to Hidden in the Sand fit the song's old-timey aesthetic, combining to make a fantastic sound. Great vocals all around. And the lyrics are good as well. They're just, about a, they're just about a simple love story, but they're still Tally Hall-esque enough to fit on the album. And their simplicity is a good contrast from the elaborateness of Ruler of Everything's lyrics. Simple lyrics, but very effective ones as well. Hidden in the Sand is a very lovely song. The production is beautiful, the vocals are fantastic, and the lyrics are nice and calming. It's a really nice track that brings the album to a nice, soft landing. A fantastic end to one of my favorite albums. Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum is one of my favorite albums. While the bidding is just okay, and Two Wove is pretty bad, the rest of the tracks have such an enjoyable vibe. The production is fun and creative, the vocals are enjoyably theatrical, and the lyrics are very interesting and creative. It's definitely not an album for everyone, but if you like surreal and fun songs, definitely check this album out, as well as Tally Hall's other stuff. Thank you so much for this awesome album, Tally Hall, and I hope you five are doing all right wherever you are. And that's it. Comment your thoughts on Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical, Mu Mechanical Museum and Tally Hall, and tune in next time for more content when I make it. Till then, this is Jeremy, ending our broadcast day. See ya!